Hello, this is Reverend Don Lewis coming to you from beautiful Salem, and with me is G'day Parma. G'day, G'day. <laughs> so, uh, we, this is actually our second attempt at this particular yes. uh, broadcast, <laughs> but you were, you were telling me about a vision that you had. Yeah, um, you asked me about my impressions of Salem, and when I, when, I was, when I got here, I think it was like an hour after I got here, um, actually you and I were walking, yeah. and um, the, sto the storm was coming, and it was quite, you know, looked quite fierce. So oh, yes. something I like to do anyway when I go to a new place is connecting with the spirits of place and the genius loci to just say hello and thank you for welcoming me here. And I did that, and I had this. Um, I, I'm very um, visually visually um, stimulated, so I had this huge impression of a, of a phoenix cross eagle. That's the only way I can explain it, uh, with like electrical fire coming out of it um, as an apex above the town. And um, I then, you know, asked if the storm could pass, which it did. Um, which was great, so thank you. And um, and then last night, uh, there was an interesting confirmation of that because we called the cab to go uh, back to the hotel after you know eating and drinking after the workshop last night, and um, the cab pulled up and the, the symbol of the phoenix was on the side of it, um, exactly the same as I'd seen. So I thought that was an interesting cool. confirmation. Yeah. It's interesting how spirit does give confirmation. Mm. Yeah, now you, you you're. I think one of your main experiences of Salem is that it's really cold. Yes, it is. It is really cold. Because <laughs> where you come from, it's not cold. Uh, yeah, no. I come from a place in Australia which actually rarely experiences winter. We have like two weeks of true winter. Uh, we live in a subtropical climate, so warm, warm, warm. So you're 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 having quite an experience on this trip. Yes, I am. I'm, I'm actually fearing the winter now. <laughs> you, where where are you going from here? Um. After Salem, so tomorrow I leave Salem, and then I'm just going back to New Hampshire for a little bit. You'll um, be cold there too. Yep, I will. Um, and then I'm going to San Francisco for a week, and apparently I'll be It'll cold be warm. there. Well, oh, well, it's okay. warmer there. Okay, cool. People have, you know, strange, well, um, conflicting, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> I hope it's warmer. It, it's warmer there than it is in Salem. Oh, today. okay, good. Thank the gods. Um, <laughs> and so from San Francisco, I go to LA, LA to San Diego, and San Diego to Phoenix, Phoenix to Albuquerque. Most Chicago. of those areas will be much warmer. Cool. But then I go to Chicago, Minneapolis, and Canada. What part of the year is that? November, December. Oh my goodness, that's something <laughs> really warm to wear. Yeah. Uh, you, you will experience a side of Earth you have never seen Ex before. Exactly, I might not leave the house. Uh, <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't even know what to say for that, except mm. it will, well, you know, all aspects of life are beautiful. Exactly, and I have to learn this, because another thing I'm calling this journey is the triple descent journey, because I mm -hmm. just had, it, like in Australia, obviously our seasons are opposite, so I just went through the descent cycle and the waning cycle, and then um, I left to go to England um, just after Imbolc, and um, now I'm back going through the descent cycle, and then I get back to Australia just, um, just for Lunasa, and that straight away after the sacrifice of the king goes back into the descent cycle. So <laughs> the triple descent. And as a devotee, so it's a bit of an initiation. Yeah, absolutely. And I think like hugely initiatory journeys and threshold moments are important as a witch, as, as a human being. So and if I can consciously embrace them as such, I'm I, I empower myself through that. So now is, your, is this your first trip of this scale? Yeah, I've done a lot of traveling in the past two years uh, in Australia, which I hadn't I hadn't actually seen Australia a lot before until mm. my first book came out. So that's been fun. But yeah, this um, I was in England and Ireland doing mm. a sacred sites tour, guest guiding for that, and um, that wasn't really related to the release of my book. But this, like the whole states mm. thing, is, and I'm I'm actually for the the entirety of the time I'm here in the states is ten weeks. So that's mm. quite a long time. It is, yeah. yes. So, you mentioned your book. Yes, I did. Shameless promotion. <laughs> yes. This would be the moment to hold up your oh, book. Oh, yes. My pretty book. Isn't it pretty? Yay. There we go. It's very pretty. It is actually a lovely cover. Yeah, I know. I'm very happy with the cover. So, tell us a little bit about the, about the new book. Okay. This book is called By Land, Sky, and Sea, and it's um, subtitled Three Realms of Shamanic Witchcraft. Um, those in the Druidic and Celtic traditions would know that land, sky, and sea speaks of the three worlds, and the three worlds is a is a universal um, concept among all shamanic and indigenous cultures. So that it, they the sky is the upper world, the land is the middle world, and the sea is the underworld. And a lot of people wonder what why is the sea the underworld? It's on the same plane as the land. Well, in Celtic cultures, they believed that you had to cross over a body of water or mm -hmm. um, across the sea um, through the through the um, the valley or as 
through the realm of the um, dying sun to, to reach the point where you know you were going to be able to cross the, the death threshold into the underworld of the ancestors so that's why it has that correlation so in saying that this book is um, is a directive on shamanic witchcraft which I think is a, is a topic that's becoming more and more popular and more, oh, yeah. more sought for in the world especially with you know uh, global economic recession and this uh, a need for people to to personalize and to be and to be responsible for for their spirituality and witchcraft provides that it's all about the ethics are about self responsibility mm -hmm. and about you know it rests on the fact that we're all interconnected and but shamanism I think um, takes that a step further in in saying that the the world is alive and thus responsive mm -hmm. so everything we do we do in a living living relationship with everything else yes. um, at the same time as saying that I do believe that that witchcraft its core is shamanic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so and shamanic means uh, being able to uh, skillfully and um, and technically um, have the knowledge of altering um, consciousness um, in between mm -hmm. states of consciousness. Therefore, also traveling between the realms, the manifold worlds that 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 dwell in um, in the same space and same time, um, and being able to to be of service. Um, to travel to those places, to translate spiritual abstract into practical knowledge, to convey it to your people, whether that's you know um, a tribe or mm. a city. Yeah. I, there's a lot of urban shamanism going on now too, and that's because in cities it's hugely needed because oh, people yes. people live in that paradigm of separation and um, everything is one you know everything is a discrete thing. And while that is true, though simultaneously everything is interconnected, and that that matters a great deal spiritually speaking. So there's in this book there's a lot of it's a more it's more of a how-to book than my first book mm -hmm. which was more philosophical. Um, this book is it provides a lot of techniques that um, the techniques that I've used and I've taught um, over the past five years that that work for me certainly, but um, that have worked for others. So I feel happy and gracious in passing them on. And a lot of a lot of it is a syncretization of many traditions. So my mm -hmm. my um, my involvement with the wildwood tradition definitely is um, shows in that uh, there's reclaiming influence, there's fairy influence, there's Wiccan influence, and um, there's Hindu influence. So that all is respectfully um, syncretized mm -hmm. together um, with you know again respect for the origins of those respective traditions and being able to see that the uh, weaving them into a whole is is, is a personal journey. And sometimes the tradition that you walk alone um, is not the tradition that another will, because we're all again unique and we're all um, unique facets of the one. So, but at the end of the day, all roads lead to Rome. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And there are many roads up the up the mountain, etc. So, now, now you are of, if I phrase it correctly, Kelto Balinese origin. Yeah, that's what I'd say. <laughs> and how, how would you? How, how has that influenced you? Um, well, I was. It's only recently that I've actually become more public about the fact that I was born into a mystical tradition. Mm -hmm. um, I never really like to state that because you know there's a lot of hoo-ha about people um, uh, claiming hereditary status and people not believing that and people fighting mm -hmm. over the validity of it, mm -hmm. which I think is a load of shit. Excuse my French. Like I believe in I believe in the validity of hereditary mm -hmm. traditions, and Absolutely. we just have to we just have to do a little research and also meet a few people mm -hmm. to understand that, you know, 10,000 years of pagan history cannot be eclipsed by 2,000 years of Christian history. That could be true. Um, there's certainly an amount of syncretization that goes on, and we, we look at Afro-Cuban traditions like Voodoo and Santeria, they have huge Catholic influence, but it's a veneer, yes. and it protects, it protects the original law and the original ritual. Mm -hmm. And they know that. They know what they're doing, in the same way that I guess like a lot of Stregoria or Italian witchcraft mm -hmm. that has been... Um, imported to the Americas um, has the same kind of Catholic veneer yes. but you know there is so, there's so much uh, research to be done in that area but at the same time I don't think it's you know fair to just offhandedly dismiss people for well know. the people who offhandedly dismiss the older traditions are usually the people who don't know anything absolutely <laughs> no I agree and, and they often it's just that bandwagon of there was nothing before Gardner yeah okay <laughs> fair enough but um, uh, yeah. well <laughs> yeah exactly so um, growing up in a mystical tradition that wasn't, you know, that isn't witchcraft, but is is very magic focused, is very mm. ritual focused. Um, you know, I share that now because it hugely influences me in an ancestral way. I'm very ancestrally focused. Mm -hmm. um, I would probably be more um, Celtic focused, but um, 
I do really honor the Balinese traditions, and actually, mm -hmm. when I when I teach things like spirit possession and drawing down and channeling and um, oracular seership, the, the Balinese tradition actually speaks more through me at those moments mm -hmm. because I have a lot more to say from that perspective yes. and from that context because I didn't grow up in an intact Celtic tradition, mm -hmm. so like I I have no claim to that, but I do have claim um, to a Balinese tradition that's intact and living. Very cool. Yeah. Well, um, you have a workshop starting in 10 minutes, I believe. Oh, wow, I do. <laughs> there you go. So, thank you very much. Yes, and thank you. If we have a chance, maybe we'll throw you in front of the camera okay. one more time before we're done. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank and you uh, we'll talk to you soon. <laughs>